Welcome back. I'm playing Ashes, uh, Ash of Gods, and uh, this is our restart of the campaign since I had goofed it up as something fierce because uh, I didn't quite understand the mechanics of the game. I didn't understand how the Strix would work. I didn't understand that I shouldn't be having uh, the, what do you call them, Hopper not taking in the curse so I ended up increasing the difficulty level something fierce so it was like one shotting all my guys and making it just impossible for me to progress so I went over and I restarted it uh, I did it again with the Iron Man thinking oh I can do the same choices except this time I'll focus on Strix I got all the way to the end just about to where I left off and I ended up starting dying again because I just kept getting one-shotted and my guys had a couple of wounds and I just couldn't survive the battles at the difficulty. So I then started it a third time, uh, this time using Hopper to uh, not resist the curse, so it was much easier. Uh, but then my computer ended up doing like a manual reboot during one of the load screens and it corrupted my save. So then I'm now on my fourth playthrough of this damn game to get us to where we needed to be. And because of how much time that was taking, I ended up just putting it on the uh, easier difficulty because I was getting very, very frustrated. Uh, but in terms of major differences, uh, like I said, I'm taking on the curses. Uh, that way it doesn't increase the reaping so um, the AI units don't get bonuses because that's what it's effectively doing is it's giving stat bonuses to uh, the enemies that you fight while uh, Hopper continues to gain a lot of levels and just do a lot of damage without him suffering uh, stat consequences. So that's like exactly the opposite of what we need because Hopper's battles are extremely easy for the most part and the battles for everybody else are quite difficult so it's almost the exact opposite. I was also correct uh, when I went back and started reading things a little bit more closely uh, that if you go to certain places they'll give you tips and you actually need to uh, go there to get special events and that's I think is going to affect the ending from what I was reading about. So I went back and made some other changes so for example I went to the Dead Spring um, with Hopper and that got a special moment where he kind of sees this illusion and that gives him some stab boost. Uh, I've also gone when I meet the merch traveling merchants not only am I buying their items but after I buy the ones I want I then turn around and rob them like an asshole and that way I get some cards and some money back and as you can tell I got quite a bit of money still have quite a bit of strix my morale is very high when you rob them it typically gives you a 10% uh, hit to your morale sometimes the merchants will get away sometimes they'll wound you other times it'll just be an extra battle which means you get even more resources so I strongly recommend doing that I don't know if it's going to affect anything um, what else did I do I went to the bread market uh, as a location to get uh, more of the riddles there um, surprisingly Krieger can actually live when I went back and I started reading trying to figure out the mechanics of the game I saw that some of these decisions uh, would affect it and so what happens is you actually don't want to go to Rask at the beginning of the game you want to go to the uh, cloth salesperson and you want to get the handkerchief and I guess that has some sort of spell on it that actually prevents him from turning so he has to wear a handkerchief for the whole game but that stops him from uh, turning and he's an incredibly powerful guy because having a strong front line is definitely necessary on this game or else the other enemy AI units just run around you. Um, so that's great. Uh, I also went to the Puppy Ford, and what that did is it let me meet a merchant named Pan, and he actually lets you buy an item that allows you to put equip uh, an item on the uh, player, or character, I should say, and it 100% negates any injuries that you would have suffered. So that's great. I have not yet used it during a Strix issue to see if it would negate the Strix injury on that. So you'd always have uh, a character that doesn't suffer injuries. But I think it's just for battle. But I haven't actually tried that out. What else did I do differently? Um, when you go to, I think it was Ursus, where you have to meet uh, Tech, or I forget what his name is. It's something like that. Uh, he's the guy that your uh, Brennan knows. In the end you want to for sure go talk to him after you uh, 
go to the burned house because then he'll tell you more of a story about the burned house and then after you break out of jail you can go back to that burned house and you get a bunch of resources there um, and you just when you go to his place you don't want to actually fight uh, the soldiers you want to sneak out the back so that was something else that I did and then uh, I actually have another character that's traveling with Hopper called uh, Mushroom, I think, is if I remember correctly, and pretty much the way you get him to join the party is when you come up on the town, you just say, "Hey, are things still in friendly relations?" And he's like, "Yeah," and then the king will actually assign him to you, so you get a couple extra little dialogue options there. And Helm is obviously still alive. There's been a couple of scenes with him. Pretty much he and Brennan used to serve together many, many years ago when Brennan was still a commander. And they had some events with each other where uh, he just looks up to Brennan because, you know, Helm was having some issues with being a little scaredy cat during some of the battles. And uh, he felt that Brennan really took good care of him. And so uh, Haig told him that, hey, you're going to meet that guy again and you should probably join this party. So that's all I know about his backstory so far and then early on when you're going to the dead spring you want to kind of reload um, when you're playing with Thor to make sure you meet the merchant I forget what his name is but he actually gives you an item as well that you can buy right away that with every battle you fight it gets you an additional 300 gold so that's massive so that's like a critically important item that you can get to really hit the easy button and then obviously I've been buying some of the cards so I could get better cards uh, for the skills I actually want to use and you know the a lot of the encounters are actually random so I really got screwed on my first playthrough because I had like three, if you remember I had like three or four merchants I had back to back to back and I couldn't purchase any items because I lost money but that's now I'm like rarely meeting the merchants now that I'm robbing them all so I don't know if that's the AI saying hey stop robbing the merchants and we're not going to give them to you or if it's just all by chance because now I was able to buy a lot better items as you'll see and then I've also had better encounters so my morale is up to 100% so I think that gets me maybe some stat bonuses uh, so just all around a much, much better uh, playthrough here. Um, I didn't want to reread all that text again, so I did a lot of it off camera. Like I said, the vast majority, probably 80-90% of the stuff is still the same. Uh, it was just those few major events where, where things deviated uh, quite significantly, so just wanted to mention that. Uh, since everything on our campaign was falling apart after this scene, I thought I would just pick it up here and see what we can do. And as you can see, Krieger's here, so swears, who wages war like this? No patrols, no guards, gates open, wide as a whore's legs. You could take this fortress with a dozen scouts. You shake your head while Frigo holds the road. The only way in is through the main gate, and there should still be someone's position, uh, station there. Perhaps it's all hands on deck. Oh, the other thing I want to mention is you want to make sure that you, when you're playing, that you level up Thorn, because then if anybody... Uh, joins your party it actually goes off of Thorn's level so if you get him leveled up he can actually get people to join it'll be much higher levels and some of the battles are very difficult uh, with Luke Lopang, I think is his name, uh, campaign when you have all the guys on there, but you actually don't need to select things so when I've been fighting his battles I've literally just been using him and the two archers and that made that whole playthrough like way way easier <clears throat> so let's see Going to Prince Hurling first makes the most sense. So, house, I'll just show. So, obviously, got a lot more characters, got a lot more items here. This is the item I was talking about that Pan gave me. Well, I bought from him, he didn't really give it to me. That gives you 100% chance of avoiding injuries. This is the purse, so this is the item that gives you 300 extra gold per battle. Still have the shard. I did buy um, Bag of Herbs that we had before, that we had before, had that before. Had that before. I did buy a Warrior's Charm, so that's six health. I also did buy one of these to increase walking speed. Um, so there's two different things in here. I'm sure most of you have already figured this out, but I was confused out in my first playthrough. Is walking speed would be like the green boxes, and then running speed would be the yellow boxes. So that uses up uh, that yellow marker. So walking speed, I think, is much more powerful than the running speed. Uh, I've got the bear totem. I think I had that one before, and I did buy an iron ring, which was for health. So a lot of health items, some that did damage. So quite a bit better here. Um, because I bought... Um, cards I was able to get stone skin which is very powerful so now I actually have two uh, defense boosts one that's 10 one that's 20 so that allows me to just keep 
uh, tanking with the characters here. Uh, I, I, on one of my playthroughs, I did get the paralysis, but I just couldn't find it to be very effective. Uh, it could be great on like some major boss battles if you want to cancel somebody out, but for the most part, I just found it to be very frustrating. I'm trying to work on getting Burning Souls because I actually really like that card. I do have Blast of Air, but I actually got rid of it because I'm not really using it because by the time I get to turn four, it's like 10 damage isn't that much, and I rarely need that blast to uh, cause significant improvements. So. Um, what else? Anything else that was really different? I've been trying to work on getting inspiration, because uh, I assume that's going to stick around for multiple turns. Now you have to wait all the way to turn 5, which is kind of a pain in the ass, and that's why I haven't been buying more of Trauma. I just get it through the battles. I wouldn't mind getting Vampirism. I think that could be pretty cool, but um, difficulty is, is, you know, rarely do battles come out to be 5-6 turns long. But we'll see. Uh, I think these guys are all higher level. I have been using uh, Glenda because I just don't know with the parties if she's going to be necessary late game or not. Uh, so I'm just leveling her up. But yeah, having the two tanks, the two archers, well, three tanks including Brennan, just very, very powerful. Uh, I don't know if I can pull up their screen here to show the skills. So I've been maxed for the healers. I max out the energy. I get this, which is their self heal. Then I get uh, energy surge is what I'd like to do. So then he can get his energy back and then I'm just going to max out their healing. Uh, Fisk, I really actually don't like him. He's just a glass canyon and other units can do it much, much better. So I'm pretty frustrated with him. So I stopped using him. Uh, the archers, I first leveled out the archery master. So you get a uh, attack range and damage then I got this and now I'm maxing out that I'm actually not going with their heal on this because I'm finding that just I can keep them back far farther with the range and this snipe thing so and I can heal if I really have to uh, so you know pretty much all the warriors I max out their health right away then I start getting their damage part of me wants to get the walking because that's can be very powerful but I haven't, and I'm also considering getting the quick reflexes so they can get the retaliation skill, which allows them to counterattack, because uh, the AI will sometimes just attack when they've got one range, and then you can get a bunch of counterattacks, so that can be quite powerful. What else? I played a little bit more with Ramlin, and he's actually very powerful, because if you get these spirit armor is going he can just buff your guys by giving them these huge defense boosts and then he can also use either i forget what it's called loan which will increase the attack party uh, attack power which is quite powerful or he can use this quick mind which uh, siphons off a bunch of energy so you can do a ton of damage because it deals 12 damage to energy and increases your energy so it just allows him to kind of go nuts. Uh, Score is just a healer, so you can kind of see how I've built him out. I haven't actually been using much of Fashta and Andrea uh, this campaign, unlike my other one. They're definitely very good, especially because they can buff each other up. But they're such high targets that with my current way, I kind of know who they're going to attack, and it's just much easier for survivability. Uh, but I did get their attack up. I got them one of energy, and then by then I was able to get their walking. And then from future levels, I'll just increase their serrated tips until I can get up to the eighth level, and then I'll just focus on their health, I think. <clears throat> the Hammermen, they're actually really powerful. I did not appreciate how to use these originally, but you want to get Gloat. You want to increase their attack, and then later on you can get Second Wind. And what that does is effectively nullifies the cost of uh, the meditation skill, so it no longer costs 10 health, and it has less cooldown. And it'll effectively restore you know, 51 energy, so it heals their energy bar so they can just keep going, since a lot of these things all cost a lot of energy. Um, so they can be really powerful. Saying that, I haven't really been using him very much, um, but he does have a lot higher utility, because I was kind of pulling my hair out on Lil Peng's campaign with uh, having her, but definitely has some use. And then uh, for Brennan here, I've been using a lot more of Shelter than I think I had on my other playthroughs, because it's quite powerful early on if you have one of your tanks just kind of hanging out and you can't get into range then throw them out there let the AI attack it get retaliation on it and then throw some shelter on there for additional shield bonuses uh, I, I recommend that you get this as fast as possible because uh, then you can start using um, I forget what the skill is called knockback as fast as possible and it's very powerful 
I have not been using a lot of anger, but you potentially could do that by buffing it up. I obviously got his energy and walking, so he can just pretty much run all around the map and then throw down knockback. I did increase his attack three levels. I think you could make a very solid argument that it may be better to upgrade um, knockback so you just get all that damage going, because I think it's going to give you a three. So that could have been nine extra damage on top of his other ones. That'd be almost 20 points of damage, so... Um, I think, like I said, you can make a strong argument that I should have been focusing on that instead. Um, but I have not. So, let's see. I think that's pretty much everybody that I've got for these characters. And the items. So, those are the main things that have deviated. Oh, and then... Obviously, since I know how some of the conversations are going to go, I could just choose better conversations. So, you can see I got... A lot of loyalty in the high range so they get plus 10 to stats for some reason I couldn't get bred up I could swear he was high on my uh, last one but uh, Fisk I have only got him on uh, average 2 oh I thought V Ove that must be one of my other campaigns if you, you can get multiple uh, random encounters that can increase his loyalty so I'm actually a little surprised that that's there I have not been using score so he's still got kind of a low morale um, what else we got? Actually, the Templars are still average, too. Yep, alright, so I think that's everything. And now that I actually have an army that can fight, we're going to go to the Western Gate. The Prince would be commanding his men at the Western Gate. Oh, and give me a second, because I'm going to enable Cheat Engine so I can have faster... I just bed up the animation quite a bit because I just find that to be much easier so the city is nearly abandoned you see the occasional guard and hear a distant creaking of the carts no one pays any mind you ride into the square opposite the town gate toward the din of the battle a horn pierces air with urgency Glenda Brennan uh, her eyes wide Glenda looks beyond the gate to the bloodstained mountain path that leads to, towards the forest dad the horn is signaling a retreat right why is that squad not withdrawing the enemy is pressing the attack you face the gate a Burkhanan squad that pushed back and assault is now trapped another band of gills joins the fray you spill their blood but it might end up being your own should you risk helping the Burkhanans or just search keep searching for the prince Fraga's defenders can make do on their own join the fray you lead your companions into the fray and hope that the enemy is not smart enough to cut off your retreat. The horn signals the defenders have all back and it's clear that there will be no reinforcements. So we'll bring out these guys. And as you can see, the AI is much easier to fight now that my guys actually have health. I mean, look at these guys. My tanks have 90 health. Alright, well, let's start choking them down. Um, what do I want to do? Well, I guess we can put you over here. And get retaliation going. Let's move you up here, get shelter going, and then you can come up here, we'll get you defend. How far can you go? Ooh, he's got countering. No, yeah, do that then. Oh, should have thought that through a little bit better. I don't think he can kill anybody, so let's move you over here. Uh, 
Yeah, can't get there. Nice. Oh, more stone skin. Oh well. I guess I having thwarted the gals, you forced to re forced you are forced to retreat the assailant. Sorry at your heels, the gate closes behind you, another wave of attacker crashes against it. Hold your leg. <clears throat> like the last, the fresh attempt is unsuccessful. The hail of arrows drives them back, and in minutes the besiegers retreat from Fraga's walls. One of the warriors you save wishes to talk to you. Uh. Heiderling. The king of Isania's eldest son, and heir to the throne, Duke of Isa, steadfast guardian of royal traditions, customs, and people's liberty, veteran of the western campaigns, and founder of the Border Watch, replacement commander of the Isinian and Odalan garrisons in the fortress of Fraga, a brave warrior commended for courage and heroic conduct, given honorary golden heather bunches, by the Royal House of Odala and Pertha, the most eligible bachelor in Burkana, though the secret chancelleries of all five kingdoms suspect a marriage and title only because he prefers men. All information about Prince Hederling's liaison with his shield bearer and guard commander is classified secret and, exclude, and excluded from official records and archives. Wiping sweat from his brow. Thank you, Captain. I have not noticed the I had, had not noticed the gals outflanking us. What is your name? What brought you here? You are not from Fraga. I am Thorn Brennan of Albinus and Odala, and Captain in retirement. I am looking for Prince Hederling. Squinting. I don't look much like royalty without my crown, my crown and trinkets, huh? Sorry to say, you won't find another Hederling here. If you seek the prince, look no further. Just spare me the formalities. Your Highness, pardon me, truly, I didn't recognize you. Why are you fighting among the common soldiers? My people are exhausted, Thorn. I we have will have to abandon Fraga, but the refugees need time to reach Highborg. Our fighting buys them that. Nothing inspires soldiers like their prince fighting alongside them. You could have been slain. Even princes are mortal. We have faced more. Had we faced a more clever foe, I'm not being. I'm not. I'm. I'd not be standing here. Oh my gosh, I can't read. I'm not one to cower and hide. You risked your life for the common Burkans, who may not even know your. May not even be their father's subjects. I'm starting to see why you're so popular in Isania. What happens to Burkana happens in Isania. The, and I decide, and I myself decide which course to take. I pray, I pay no heed to the contrary opinions. Have you any other questions? Okay. Why is the siege so poorly organized? I am no less surprised. I knew the Gels and Vandals were different to Frisians, but I did not expect to have rep <clears throat> to repel at random. It's as if someone is driving these bastards to die at the walls of a fortress they've no need taking. You're right, it's not a proper siege, and Fraga will not fall. Something else troubles you, though. Is it the Frisians? Did they, do they approach? Of course, the Frisians wouldn't miss their share of the fun, but we'll be leaving Fraga before they arrive. What's troubling is the chaotic siege. It's vexing. It appears as though the Frisians has hired the tribes to do it, but I know that's impossible. The Gels aren't really themselves. Pillaging and kidnapping is their way, but to sacrifice their lives for a foreign city? I've heard rumors of steep madness, but this is something else completely. Your guess is as good as mine. Do you know the whereabouts of my son, Mac de Brennan? I was just about to ask you if you're related. I'm afraid I don't have any good news. The lad disappeared when the siege began. Drukit still searches for him to no avail. Who is Drukit and where can I find him? He's one of my men, and dare I say the best. He's looked after Mac since the lad arrived in Friga. You should speak to Alon first. He's the commander of the guard here. You'll probably find him in that house over there. I shall ask him to assist you. My thanks, Your Highness. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Wait. I hesitate to say this, but I owe you my life, and I shan't forget it. If this pestilence doesn't destroy us, find me. I'm sure it'll be easy. 
Yes, Your Highness. Take your leave. I hope you find your son. He's a good lad, and now I know who he takes after. Farewell, Captain Brennan. <clears throat> Farewell, Prince. All right, so that's a lot. I don't think anybody leveled, did they? Oh, they did. All right, well... Ooh, I could start getting health. I guess that's the big question. Do I keep buffing his health? I think I am. Because I do really like to use... Yeah, let's keep the health going. Because I use a lot of their tackling. Get you maximizing your healing. <laughs> All right, let's go to Lon. Having spoken to the prince, you visit Lon, Fragus commander at the guard. He points out a warrior nearby, beside a nearby house. That man, with his back to us, is Drucket. Freshly returned from a scouting expedition. Good day to you, Drakit. My name's Thorn Brennan, and I have been told that you are searching for my son, Macht. Oh, I read this with my uh, other thing, so I'll just go through this real quick. Since for you guys, this dialogue was just on the last video. For me, this was like a week ago. Alright. Alright, so Storm Pass, Three Springs, or White Tower. Alright, let's go to the White Tower, I guess. Or Three Springs. Oh, is it going to cost? I got enough Strix, I think I can afford it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, didn't do anything. Pretty sure I read that already. All right, let's fight some NCs. All right, no mages. That's excellent. And then the other thing, obviously, that's much different, is because it's on the, the reaping isn't so high. They're not getting these those damn reinforcements anymore because those were just a freaking nightmare.
Actually. Uh, I'd rather get the experience to somebody else. health going or do I get pulverized going? I think I'll alternate the two. And then I've been giving her a lot of master combat. I get you that. Get you that. Tell me your riddle, and it was truth. And we are going to fight. Let's pull you guys back. Like so. there. As they only have one range for attack, I'm going to put retaliation on you. Yeah. I should have guessed that was going to happen. gonna be trauma done. With the cannibals defeated you rush to the toward the tower. Several dead bandits lie in the entrance. This Drocket is clearly a skilled warrior, but all thoughts of him fade the instant you find your son's body. Oh no, I didn't save him. Glenda pushed past you stop she stoops, stoops over Mac waiting. He's alive, Dad. Oh, so I did save him. Alive, but his arm is gone. Still, he lives. Thank the gods we arrived in time. You drop to your knees, embracing your children tightly. Mac opens his eyes and looks at you and his sister for a while before cracking a smile. So this is no dream. It's really you. I'd lost hope. And who's that, Rocket? Smiling, the warrior draws close. Yes, Mac, it's me. Take it easy, lad. After all this... You need much rest. Be still now, as there are three of us to take will take care of you. 
Uh, I'm not really thinking my guy Brennan's much of a hugger. The warrior laughs as you raise, rise, wrapping you in a bear hug. Under different circumstances, you might protest, but the relief of saving Max is too great. You free yourself from Drockett's mighty embrace and smile at him. <clears throat> How can I possibly thank you? We've just met, and I'm already in your debt. Without you, we'd have stood no chance. Damn them, Drockett growls. Too bad we didn't kill them all, especially the leader. The bastard ran away. One day I'll find him, and, I'll, and he'll beg for a quick death. Drockett reaches out suddenly, a flash of flashing a sword in front of Glenda. She cries out to the surprise of a short crossbow bolt bounces off of the blade with a clang, but the second bolt, one meant for your son, comes too quickly and pierces Drockett's chest just below his heart. Don't waste time on me, croaks Drockett. I'm dead and you know it. Take the bundle from my bag and the locket from my neck. Wait till you meet someone who, who can guess what's in the locket. If he guesses right, give him the bundle. It's very important. The dying warrior's gaze falls on Brett. Give him the locket. He should wear it. Now leave and no pack him. You will be saved. There is no other place. Go to the water manier. There you will be cleansed. Beware the woman with the narrow face. Hmm. Ask about the woman. You have questions for Drockett, but he's too far gone to answer. His dying wishes are unclear, but you feel a duty to honor them. You hang the locket around Brett's neck, telling him to keep it safe, and then set out for the water manure. Several paces from the tower, you spot a little tile with a small bee scratched on it. You lift up with the tip of your sword and discover Mabok wasn't lying. With his treasure secretly in your, securely in your bags, you're almost ready to set out. You turn to meet Max Gaze, your son, your firstborn, and the hair is crippled. Close to fainting, he looks at you with eyes that remind him of your wife. They shine with gratitude. It's difficult to hug him. Thank you. I knew that you'd come in time. After what I've been through, nothing daunts me. No matter how difficult the road, I'll endure. I'm just glad you're not mad at me. Mac de Brennan, son of Thorn, and Likey's and Likey Brennan confer the title of baronet, listed with his sister in the noble house of Vichy's genealogy as heir to his maternal grandmother, Count Vichy, graduate of the Page Corps and Odala's regiment of young warriors, lieutenant of the Royal Guard and commander of Odalan Guard. An able student of science and the art of war, honored and rewarded by the royal decrees for his service in the border patrol and city watch, disciplined and punished for mischief and debauchery many times during his training, top of his class, he surpassed his age mates in a number of complaints received from the parents of noble maidens for soliciting womanly, fa womanly favors. This behavior extended to palace, palace servants whom he harassed with scandalous tricks and jokes. During his military service, he continuously broke the rules for marching and skirmishing against bandits. Overly enthusiastic, hot-tempered, and overconfident, known for his courage, which his companions in arms say borders on madness. Uh, nothing daunts me. No matter how difficult the world I'll endure, I'm just glad you're not mad at me. I'll give you a piece of my mind once you recover. With a guilty look, I'll never fully recover. Drockett was away, and we were rescuing a merchant by the Three Springs. The man-eaters captured one of our labs. I tried to help, got clubbed in the head, and woke up here. Irritate boy, have you no common sense? You think Drockett could have helped? What good is one man against a dozen? Is he an icon? What did I teach you? Through country, don't ask. Just look at him. Draka could have been titled the best swordsman in Burkana were he to compete. You must know that it's not important what others say about you still. I remember how you, you taught me. I've already admitted that I was wrong. It was three years ago. I was never. I was just trying to reason with you when I grabbed your arm. I didn't mean to break it. You got on my nerves back then. You have no idea how hard it was not to punch you. Please forgive me. <clears throat> I forgive you a long time ago. I just wanted to be myself. No need to worry. The arm you broke is the one I lost. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. 
Your mother died before she could see you again. She died of the plague, Glenda told me. I'm so ashamed. I've not... S when could she have possibly told you this? I've not seen her in three years. We were always on the campaign. These misfortunes are nothing new. She waited for you during every waking hour, and then you and your squad passed... And then... You and your squad passed Elbinus, and you didn't even ask for a short leave. At least you had the decency to write. We buried her in the garden. I'm hoping we can all go there and pay our respects. I didn't want to confront you. You wanted me to be too much like you. You'd have, you'd have to sacrifice an arm to make that happen now. I guess I was wrong, too, considering... Consider it punishment for my temper and overconfidence. It'll make me an even wiser warrior. Through his teeth, I. You still have your right arm for that, but you'll have stiff competition. Your sister. I was much worse with the sword when I was her age. She's preparing a couple of horses for us. I'm not letting you out of my sight ever again. No more heroics for you. Hmm. Not letting you out of my sight ever again. Forcing a smile. I'm growing to a man, father. You'll have to let me go eventually, but not now. I've got to do something about the stump. Hmm. I'll have the best healers tend to you, son. Master Smith will make you a new arm, new armor and a shield, and the wooden carvers will craft you a new arm that will look every bit as real. I'm not ashamed of my injury, and I'm not going to hide it. I never hid behind you. I won't start now. You know this is just the beginning. You're damn right. I'm glad you've not gone soft. No more heroics for you now. <coughs> I wish you understood me, Father. I never wanted to be a hero. I just wanted to be more than the son of the famous Thorn Brennan to make it my own name. Look, there goes the father of the famous... I'm Mac de Brennan. Hearing those words would make me proud. A Shadow Clan warrior serves his employer as long as it doesn't infringe his loyalty to the Shadow Clan. Treachery is unforgivable. Shadow Clan's code for warriors of peace. All right, Kimra Path. You hear. Kama muttering something under his mask. Listening closer, you can tell that he's singing. It's the Temple Heim that amazed you when Reet sang it, but it sounds much quieter coming from Karma. The NC senses your interest, and you decide to talk to him. In a low voice, the lullaby my mother used to sing for me is all that I have left. Fortunately, she didn't live long enough to see me in a mask and my world covered in flames. Did I read his stuff? I don't remember if I did. He's a master of the hunt in the sacred cliffs, called the Fingers of God, and was chosen and blessed by Tybibar, son of the gods. Let his hand of vengeance be ever steady. He's able to control steel birds and wasps, an ability the gods gave him for abandoning his, abandoning his past behind. Kama is the fourth level warrior who traversed three veils of fire and eight sulfuric rains and foresaw his own face to be unified with his brethren as an undivided fire of vengeance, loyal and unwavering from the creation till he fades into the absolute test with cleansing the flesh through pain and dissolution. He is the flesh while flesh lives. He is the spirit when eternally conjoins the when eternity conjoins the two together. Weird. <clears throat> In a low voice, the little blah, 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 blah. How many years have you worn the mask? All right, I won't bother you with conversation. How many years have you worn the mask? If one year here also lasts 300 days, It'll be five years, but I wasn't mad when I put it on. It was a sign of valor. There were many who sought a mission to the sacred hunt. There was a talk about the end of the world. We were the ones to delay it. But you couldn't, could you? My world was enveloped with flame during its final hours. Many things became evident when I, 
when the sacred stones appeared. Why would the gods build obelisks for protection, and protection from what? Their gods. But the madness leaves a little doubt. Do you think the same fate awaits our world? Do you ever ponder fate while in battle? You must fight. How does anyone fight the gods? You can't go wrong by fighting your enemies. How do you fight however you can? Whom did the sacred hunt target? The people, those called heretics, those renegades who hadn't gone mad and fought us wearing black painted masks, those who tried to destroy the sacred stones thinking that they were the source of all the woes. Did you kill them? Yes, we tried to do that near the Meniers. They demanded blood. It was like a voice controlling us, but the sacred stones were insatiable. The lands around the fingers of gods became practically deserted. What made you believe in the end of the world? There were many signs. The sun grew brighter and brighter, burning everything out. The plague chained poor folks' throats and wrists. Most importantly, many changed into monsters, the spawn of the abyss. We massacred entire villages if we saw just one of them. But it didn't help you. Nobody thought about that. Even after we got here, we kept doing as the voice told us. We fulfilled... We filled the sacred stones with power and became the embodiment of evil. The poison that kills whoever touches it isn't harmful. The poison that kills whoever touches it isn't harmful to us. So the evil brought you here. I'm not sure it was evil. Now when the fog inside my head lifted, I think that there was more than one voice. You could hear a choir under a burnt skies, and under the hateful racket you could hear something else, a plea, a admonishment and remorse. Were there always only voices? No. We saw the Umbra Heralds and us the same time, the same year the Meniers appeared. They put rings on our fingers and taught us to use lash, lash, lashes? The flying swords they brought with them. That's when we stopped talk, taking off our mask, taking our masks off. Did the umbrella look like people? They looked how you they pleased. The sun shone through their bodies. They were. There were moments it seems as if they weren't even there, but their touch when they taught us was stronger than that of the mightiest warrior. Did the Meniers give them strength? No, not then. They told us the gods themselves live in their bodies, nurturing them. They said that the gods saw through their eyes, touched us with their hands. We wept tears of joy when we heard it. You haven't tried killing those Umbra? Others did. Our enemies wore black masks. as. As far as I know, no one su succeeded. The Umbra had to deal with some internal conflicts, though. They didn't die in the end. They were they are incorporeal beings. Incorporeal beings. So the Umbra fought each other, but the gods nurtured them. Does that mean the gods opposed each other? That's what I think about constantly. What if the my burning world was the gods' battlefield? Where are they then? Do you no longer hear the voices? I hear breathing. The mighty warriors been crushed under a mountain and can't awaken. It's terrifying. Someone must have been charged here. Must be in charge here, right? The Umbra, they met us near the stone. They prophesied a quick victory and then vanished. They appeared in blaze of power. You can call them reapers. All right, I won't bother you with conversation. As you wish. You don't have to talk, hear, or listen if you choose not to. Radio. You see a Frisian traveler on the dusty road. He can barely put one foot in front of another. His clothes are torn. His lips are dry and cracked. He is clearly suffering from thirst. Your fellows start to remove flasks from their belts and offer the poor fellow something to drink. Hmm. Let's do nothing. Try to make him happy. You watch the precious water liquid fill the traveler's flask. He drinks thirstily, and then you speak. When the water runs out, those who gave theirs the Frisians will go thirsty, and will find another source of water. Nobody answers. Maybe this Frisian isn't our enemy. You continue, but you can always 
but you always save your family before your neighbors during a fire, even when you think there's plenty of time to save everyone. You move on, but hear Reach shouting behind you, We can't do it, Econ. We're not animals, we're people. You should have understood long ago that humans were far more dangerous than the animals you tell her. That's what I've learned anyway. Hmm. I think that's going to piss people off. No. A small group of oddly closed people attracts your attention. The garments are surely made in Burkana. Rather than using the road, they move alongside it, hiding in the hollows and hills. They're not happy to be noticed. Their leader signals, and the strangers quickly take to the road. You're surrounded, all of them well-armed warriors. Their leader seems fearless but suspicious. He surely isn't familiar with your clothes and appearance. Who are you, he asks, especially you. What clothes are these? Enter conversation. You answer calmly, sure that you'll easily best your opponent in quickness. I'm from the Shadow Clan, an icon. Have you heard of us? The garb is normal for icons. These are my companions. The leader turns squinting. He thinks his warriors are stronger. I have met not even one, though I've heard rumors, but your land is far away. What's an icon doing on the road to f road from Phrygia? What's your business, and how did you get here? Tell him that you're saving these people and yourself. The stranger frowns. Who are you saving them from? Who is a threat to an icon? They say icons are invincible. Tell them that even an icon is no match for an army. The stranger chuckles. I like the way you think. However, I'd love to see an icon fight. Can care to join my squad? You throw your <clears throat> you throw up your hands. Nobody rushes to find another client after losing one. Why would you need an icon? You're just passing by now, but what if but if I'm with you, people will gossip and everyone will remember you. You must go back soon anyway. Three Frisian legions are preparing to march. The stranger regards you curiously. It's important news about the Frisian legions, I mean, but we came here for another reason. Didn't you hear anything about them building a bridge across the Great Abyss? There are rumors of Frisians trying to cross the Great Abyss and strike Epricana in its unguarded belly. What say you? You shake your head. That's impossible. Many leagues of bottomless abysses are poisoned with toxic smoke. The high peaks of the Milky Mountains are on the Burkhanan side. It's a decoy. There's no such rumors in Phrygia. You should wait for your wait for the troops in the Vale of Mercy. The stranger looks at you for a moment, nods, and signals to the warriors to accompany him. They turn and leave, disappearing into the nearest hollow. All right. Where am I trying to go? Long road to the roaming veneer, so I gotta go up there. Will the NC ever take off his mask? There must be a way to get rid of it. Will you remove your mask when the power releases me? Take it off. I'd have to rip off my skin, but it's not the reason I can't do it. See the rings on my fingers? If I take them off, the lashes will fail, will fall like dead leaves. It's nothing, and nothing will bring them back to life. If you remove my mask, I will fall too. It's an unbreakable enchantment. What if it takes you over again? It won't consume me. My threads are torn on the outside. The ones inside are still strong, but I'll eventually burn them. Bring them out one by one. Perhaps you should break them despite the pain. Do you think I'm afraid of injuring my face? No, Icon. The mask is affixed to my heart. Do you remember your home? Thinking of my home is more painful than remembering my lost world. I don't want to hurt you. Memories of home are painful for me too. 
Did you burn it down and kill your loved ones? No, I renounced them. I renounced mine as well, but afterwards I killed them. Did the gods destroy your world? Even behind a veil of madness I pondered that, and the she reaper's beautiful words which flowed like a mountain brook, she said that gods are like humans. Hmm, why does she talk to you? She saw that I don't kill on the spot, but a fraction of a second later than the others. Every time, it's like I'm struggling to cross the threshold. So not all gods kill immediately. They also pause for a moment. What does she mean? I don't know, but some of the black masked warriors before we killed them yelled about the gods fighting just like us, and that one of them has gone mad and seeks to devour the world. Good talk, Kama. Here's my advice. When, it's, when you've got time, warrior, find peace in your heart. My heart is a desert where peace cannot be found. Oh, what an edgelord. Uh, let's see here. I didn't actually go through these guys. I think these were the same cards I had on my other playthrough. Same characters. Uh, I have the Rune of Wisdom. I picked this up after a fight. I purchased this. Uh, so it gives 8 health, and I think I got that one after a fight too. So that's pretty much the same. Uh, in terms of my characters, a little ping skills. I uh, got them the walking. Got that. I put 2 into Sunburn because that's a pretty good ability. And I've been working on getting his health up. Uh, he's just a standard healer. Uh, comma, because I've leveled Lo Ping up, I got to level him up a bit, so I got him the attack, the walking, more attack, and then I give him the retaliation. I'm likely then going to put a bunch of things into a battle experience to give him health and energy, because I don't know why I would do that over uh, over these, because these are just single and that's giving both. Maybe there's a ceiling, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm building him out the same way I would have built uh, Brennan Glenda. Uh, he's just a standard warrior. I barely use her at all, but I'll end up leveling this out, then get her some more attack, probably health, and uh, continue to focus on health. Uh, the vampirism, actually, maybe instead of increasing health here, I'll just give her vampirism so she gets more healing. You know, obviously, standard healers, standard um, hammermen, so nothing really very impressive there. This is the road you hear shouting and barking and muffled crawls to investigate. You discover a huge wolf tied to a t tree. It's muzzled and its hind legs are secured by fish netting. Several galleon women hurl rocks at the animal, preparing to set their dogs upon it. A man holding a torch tied to a long stick thrusts it towards the wolf. Ruger scratches his head. That's some false, a false sport. It's good for dogs to fight a wolf once in a while, but not if it's bound. That's outrageous. You step before the woman and the swordsman. Three swings is all it takes to cut the ropes, binding the animal. The dogs scatter with their tails between their legs. The wolf limps towards the forest. Silence falls over the little glade. The galleon woman huddled together and the children run into the bushes. The man tries to save his dignity. You look back at your companions. Could this wolf confess the location of its lair? No. Then what's the point of torturing it? The gal's eyes are filled with hatred. It was killing our cattle. You feign surprise then. Why didn't you kill it? To teach it a lesson? Trying to make a wolf swear that it'll never kill cattle again. The gal grabs the stake from the ground and st snarls menacingly. Remind me why some squinty-eyed slap ordering gals around. Threaten the gal. You step forward, striking the gal below the knees. With one fluid-filled swing of your sword, because he can, you reply as he topples to the ground. The galleon woman run away, screaming. 
There should be a point to everything you tell your companions, nourishment, survival, or enrichment as a means of avoiding poverty, but a beast's suffering is pointless. The bastard's suffering is pointless, at least when the other bastards can't see it. You put the wheezing gale out of his misery. Man, I'm badass. Traveling through the uninhibited lands, uncapped trees and bushes, line the roadside without warning, Reed throws her bow and quiver, and her travel bag down the bolts to one of the trees. Talk to Reed later. Oh, I think I read this on my other one. This is one where she finds out that that was uh, some of her followers and that they died. All right, so I'm just going to use kind of my standard party, although part of me wouldn't mind using comma, but let's get her done with this. I was actually hoping that was going to kill. There we go. You take charge of the skirmish and vanquish the gals. You tell your companion to open the gate at the stockade, which has fallen eerily silent. Inside the stockade, you find NC prisoners bound by the arms and legs. Their dead bodies are mangled. Some of them have their masks ripped off along with their faces. They are likely the ones you heard screaming. The companions are silent. You, It looks like you've killed the gals unjustly. This is war, you explain. It's rare to find battle where the sides are evenly split into villains and saints. The itching inside the icon pattern makes you grit your teeth in pain and scratch your scars. It could be the reaping magic or ubiquitous salt in the air, or the recent journey through the igneous desert. On top of everything else, the Strix absorb your fatigue and burn themselves out. You see a man ahead loaded with goods and money. He looks like a merchant, but his clothes aren't those of with means. Ask the merchant if he has anything for sale. The merchant readily drops his sack on the dirt. I have many goods. Don't be fooled by my looks. They keep the bandits away. I have many useful things. Perfect. Because I have money. Hmm, that's interesting. Give me that. I want the Strix. Uh, what is this? Snake totem? No, we're not doing that. Do I blow all my money on getting this moon charm? Hmm. Bear totem. Yeah, I'm not going to do it.
Reek tells you she knows what it cost you to give her the stone that saved her. You didn't. You don't reply. Your stone absorbed the curse and died. She adds as she leaves. I don't know how the stones die, but that's how I felt. It's just a Strix now. The magic is very power. This magic is very powerful. Icon. As she leaves, you remember the price you paid for the stones. Only the best have them. You needed to win to rise to the top and defeated warriors your age and older. In retrospect, those battles seem more terrifying than the ones you are fighting now. Reminisce. As they put you on the altar and prepare to insert another sacrificial stone into your flesh, you close your eyes more to avoid seeing the friends you killed and mutilated for this moment than to avoid seeing the rite itself. It doesn't help. The real question is, were they really your friends? Didn't they try to give you a taste of your own medicine? Why? Being momentarily drunk on power coupled with an inescapable horror of humiliation? Or maybe you wanted to feel this red-haired woman's piercing gaze on your back? A column of smoke rises below behind a low hill. You skirt around and discover the roadsides and Roadside hut is engulfed in flames. Children scream inside. The Gillian woman thrashes about while a bunch of Frisians idly watch and exchange banter. The Wodean Inquisitor's description of the icons come to mind. Attack the Frisians and send one of your companions to rescue the woman. You pick the best person for the job and you won't have much time. You say quietly, rescue the children. That's more important than killing the Frisians. Elias nods and tries to get past the Frisians. When you attack, Elias darts into the burning hut. Well, that's fine. I can get this done without it. Alright, what am I doing? Health? And part of me wonders if I shouldn't be doing that, so he has increased survivability, but let's just get the health. Because that stuff could be even higher there with the energy. Alright, let's give her that. Little health bonus. Yeah, these archers are the biggest pain in the ass though. That's they're very, very dangerous. Actually, let's do that. Then let's do that. Oops, come on. to try to keep your survivability up. Oh man, he's got a lot of armor. Well, let's bring you up, I guess. Do that. After the battle, you watch the house collapse on itself. Elias listens to the galleon woman nearby. According to her, the Frisians were extorting her before they set the fire to the home. Now you shall have to plead with distant relatives to take her in. She hands you a Strix encrusted pendant to show her gratitude. 
you look at the pen at its read time, you hear yourself say, keep it. It can save the children. It Take turns wearing it. It'll, we have to get going now. These Phrygians weren't providing for themselves. You say to no one in particular they were having a lark and paid for it. As for the children, sometimes it's not what you've done, but what you didn't do that disrupt one's inner peace. The road goes through an abandoned Gallian village. The ancestral towers are in ruins, and the gardens are abandoned young Frisian shovels. Earth near the roadside altar, there's several sacks, a street merchant cart, and a chest that hawkers carry on their shoulders. You shake your head. There's no worse fact, a worse act for an icon than disturbing the ashes of the deceased. It's strange. The Shadow Clan is indifferent to the fates of stranger, but is quick to ensure their fallen rest peacefully. It might be because of the death we are all mixed in the cauldrons of the gods. At least that's what the temple servants say. Kill the marauder, walk past, ask if he has anything to sell. The merchant puts aside the shovel and wipes his hands on his belly. I have many wares, he says, turning to the chest. I have everything. The prices are low, too. Any cheaper in my merchandise would be free. Disgusted, you decide to leave. As soon as you finish trading, otherwise you'll end up killing the grave robber. Oh, I didn't understand that's what was happening there. Oh, this swaps the health of all enemy units. That could be an interesting item. Oh, this is also a very nice item. Everything here is nice. This could be excellent for a boss battle. Problem is it doesn't tell me. I wish it told me what turn that happens. I mean, this is good no matter what. And I'd definitely use it. So this would be extremely situational. And this would always be good. You stop at a pole located at the crossroads. Colorful patches hang from it. Indicate that the camera frequent this place. You nod at your find as Reet approaches. Reet looks around worriedly, then shows you a large bare spot on the ground and a trail that bends around it. That's right, Icon. That's the camera path. Even though it's hard to meet here, a wandering Meneer should appear. You just need to lure it out. Here's the trail. Ask why Reet is uneasy. What happened, you ask Reet. You seem troubled. Reed looks back, catches your eyes, and approaches. You look at Reed and feel. You look at Reed and feel what you felt when she sang in Wodan. It's indescribable. She does not sing now. She has something important to say. This is the place. The shortcut begins here. When the roaming Meneer appears, we'll douse it with blood, and it'll transport us to the Meneer near your home. Weapons, armor, and all. We have no carts stacked with loot. We'll keep everything we're carrying. How soon will the Meneer appear? It usually is revealed by now, but sometimes you have to wait. How much blood will we need to spill? I can't tell for sure. The reaping changes everything. Before, a palmful from each warrior was enough. Is there any other way? There are no other shortcut from here. The camera would normally travel to the reclining Meneer nearby, but something very gruesome is going on. It's been a year since the Frisians let anyone near that Meneer. I think that's where the Inquisitors 
were sending us. The Meneer can be lured out. Death may attract it, but it will also anger its Meneer guardian. What do you think? Is this guardian merciful? He's detached, just like you. He doesn't like people. Not in the least because we kill our own kind. He doesn't always appear, but this time I'd rather he would. The reaping has changed everything. It will not be easy for me. What exactly are you going to do? Wait for the Meneer to appear. If it does not appear by the end of the day, I would say that there's no shortcut. He tries to say something, but it, you silence her. More talk is unnecessary. Uh, having considered the situation, you summon Reed. We should spill blood. We should give up on the shortcut. You should be beholden to another's rules no more than you should spill blood outside a battle. Moreover, icons trust none but themselves. It seemed wiser to give up on the shortcut. Reed speaks up. When the reaping began, everything changed. We must leave the plane, but the roaming veneer might not appear in time. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what it'll take to uh, lure it out. All I know is blood must be spilled. Shanak grins wickedly. There is is a burden in every party, and ours has no exception. Let's get rid of it and make use of the free blood. Jeanette draws her sword. She is poised to run Alice through, but the shards of Karma's flying blade knocks a weapon out of her hand. The NC struggles to speak in the foreign tongue. Victim not needed. The enemy is coming here. We will fight the gals. Damn, she's pretty wicked give that to my my girls there he was about to kill my healer bitch he's more useful than you are yeah, I think that's everybody Try to run in here with our main character right away. Let's come down here. Do that. Do that. Get this going. is that I can keep sniping these guys and they can pick off the kills while they suicide in and attack my guy nice easy 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 uh, the newly appeared Meneer is giant, so big it could crush an entire Phrygian legion. Strange that you did not notice it the moment it appeared. Reasonable, then, that the travelers think the roaming Meneer is a mirage. It hovers above the ground. Mm -hmm. Reed is downcast. Here it is, but the Guardian is still missing. Very bad sign. I cannot help you, Icon. I must prepare the shortcut. You look around. Help with what? Are the gals not all dead? <laughs> Reed shakes her head and sees. I can sense them already. They flock to the Meneers like bees to flowers, prepare to fight. You close your eyes for a moment and indeed sense a looming danger. The mass warriors who appear by the stones at the reap time must be close. Well, that's okay. I've got more than enough strength to get these guys done. Yeah, get out of here, Kendi. Let's get your attack up. Probably need to get her some health too. Oh, she's gone. That's too bad. 
Oh, even worse. Let's run you up here. Do this. Do that. Now I gotta run you away. Let's get you over here. Get you up here. Turning around again, you see a stranger standing next to Reed in the Meneer's shadow. His stern face is that of a warrior or a seasoned traveler. He must be the guardian Reed mentioned. The stranger looks you up and down motionless like the very rock he protects. His expression does not bode well, but a third battle might be the charm. Put your hand on the hilt of your sword and onto the stranger. Remain impassive. Nod to the stranger. Either the stranger did not see it or he did not interpret your nod as a greeting. Nevertheless, he keeps staring at you. You slowly realize that he is a warrior, or a deadly one, even for an icon. Oh, shit. We're fighting, huh? Oh, no, we're not. We're talking. Ellis. Ellis can barely breathe after what happened. He clenches his teeth, his hands trembling. You move to reassure him. I have almost recovered, but I'm deeply grateful to the NC for saving me. For a moment there, I thought they would both wanted to chop me up. I will keep an eye on Jeanette. I myself will sleep with my eyes open. I've always known that the woman cannot be trusted. I've also known that women cannot be trusted. Karma. The NC still wears the mask. At least he's no longer dying. Do you hear me, Karma? You fought against your own brethren. I could never fight other icons. Slowly. You would if your brethren began to kill all those around them. If they went mad, if they tried to kill you, you would. It's not my brothers I fought. It was the ones that who devoured my world. Who destroyed your world? I know not. I could hear... I, when I could still hear, I heard the mad god did it. But I cannot be certain. There was the sun that burned everything, and poison falling like rain. I am trying to understand, Karma, what drives you. Is it your duty, your faith, your repentance? Why did you rush to Alice's defense? Why did you stop Shanette out of mercy? Mercy required time I did not have. I did not want a stupid death. That is all. This manure is clean, and only a clean manure can open a path. A dirty one leads to a quick death. Blood taken by force is unclean. You knew about this? True. But I acted as if I was in a fog, as I was a drunk. Now my eyes are open. I understand the truth. Spilling innocent blood is a quick way into the abyss. Nowhere else. Wisdom, that is what des drives me. And what did you talk about with Reet? About me, who I am now, about the time, and how much I have, how much of it I have, how much the world has. Reed is... Read his Winston. Who are you now? An NC outcast, a tribalist warrior, a former assassin, a soldier in an unlikely army. Reed saved me. I do not understand everything, but I know she saved me. She pulled me from the dark enchantment. 
I hope neither of you is mistaken. Unlike armor, spells cannot be seen, can they? They are not visible to the naked eye. I can see the magic of the stones in your flesh, Icon. They impart great strength. The Meneers are much like the stones, but they are set into the flesh of the world instead. I am part of that. How much time do you have? As long as the reaping lasts, perhaps less, we feed on the power of the Meneers, not because we cannot eat food. The spell binds us. Need, a, need the power of the Meneers. Those same spells kill us when the reaping ends. These spells cannot be broken. The longer the reaping, the longer your life. Reed told me of the Kimra. It would seem that they are my people too. I believe her. She has given my life purpose. I sh shall not allow the reaping to conclude by ending this world. Hmm. How much time does the world have? I do not know. It is not as bad as it is in my world, yet... But it does not take long for water to boil over the flames. If the one who destroyed my world comes here, it will be over quickly. Will you sense his arrival? I believe I will, as will you. But you would not recognize him, as if being on the scaffold and hearing the executioner's axe cleave the air before your neck. We will talk again, comma. If our fates are willing... And our fortunes align. We share the same fortune. Jeanette, Jeanette beams as if she's about to get married. Perhaps you should have a word with her. Why are you so pleased with yourself? Happy you did not commit murder? I'm pleased in general. Life is short, Akon. You seek pleasure wherever you can. You must not kill for pleasure. You knew the gals were approaching. You probably heard them. Oh. Nothing gets past you, I come Here, take these strixes. I collected them from the corpses of the NCs, and nobody noticed. Should have kept my, their eyes peeled. What are you playing at, Jeanette? Why did you escape Wodan if you seek death? Is there something I should know? Mm. Make a guess, Icon. Why would a young lass tear her life apart? Maybe it was torn apart long ago. Even the grievous of wounds heal. Sometimes yes, but scars remain. If you have too many, the pain cries to be relieved and it will never and it never fades. Do you believe in finding relief in another's pain if it's greater than yours? To each his own, people find relief in their own way, get drunk their own way, breathe their own way, and die their own way. Jeanette, remember the death can come from any side when you summon it in a crowd. Anybody else? I think that's everybody. I don't know why it's so zoomed in. It's kind of obnoxious, actually. Well, let's level up. Get you some more health. What is the cooldown on that ability? Five turns. So should I start getting that? Let's just get the healing. All right, get your attack. Get your damage. I think that's everybody. Bring you back up. Orkin, it's a good idea to ask the determined stranger what brought him here. If the Sunir creates a shortcut, the stranger is likely the gatekeeper. You could ask him how to use it, if it exists, even if it exists. This is Orkan Icon. He looks after the roaming veneer, making sure it doesn't absorb the taint. He'll help us, but I'll need to weave an enchantment myself. The reaping changes everything, Icon. You have Reet with you, so I'll help her and make sure you're not transported to your death. However, be prepared to surface somewhere unexpected, though I promise I'll get you to where you need to go. You have to shed a little blood. Not the ultimate price, nor is it a redemptive act. Is there anything else you wish to know? Hmm... 
How does one kill a reaper, I think is a pretty reasonable question. Why do you wish to know? I oppose the reaper. Will you challenge the strongest of the powerful? Do you hunger for glory, or are you nursing wounded pride? You are right. I know a bit about it hundreds of years ago. Fourteen stone knives were fashioned, each as powerful as a small manier. The chance to use them against reapers never came. Still, the price for them was high. The ashen wasteland is proof of that. At the Battle of Drowsy Deep, twelve curios, runaway servants of God, had to kill themselves with the stone knives. There was no other way to stop the five reapers that stood against them. One knife remains with Blance, the thirteenth curio. Another was stolen. These knives are sh a sure way to kill a reaper, despite never being tested for that purpose. Hmm. Where will this shortcut take me? To another manure down south. Is that not where you're headed? What keeps the stones afloat? A wise man once said, It's not the roaming manure that soars, but the earth that sinks. Both have been trying to reach for each other ever since. I say we move on. Oh, I forgot to read about him. Orkin. A roamer guardian of the flying stone. Orkin isn't mentioned in the Temple Canyon of Burkana and Frisia, even though his name appears in ancient manuscripts. This lends doubt to the available information about him. The hunters say that they occasionally see him near the thinly populated Vale of Mercy, especially at the northern border near the Hungry Steep. He's generally thought of as a legend. Some take him for a leader of thugs based on Locke. He's referenced in mythology of nomadic plains folk as known as the Kimra. No one can prove his existence. Give it a bit of time to stone his cool down. Alright. I gotta call it quits here shortly. Swarty. Swarty looks stunned and rubs her neck, paying no attention to the soaring veneer as the plague robbed her of her senses. Are you feeling worse? Why are you rubbing your neck? Quite the opposite. It's not hurt since not hurt a bit since the manure appeared. Too bad. The ulcer's still there. The pain will return. I wish I could stay with the manure, but Orkin is quite intimidating, and if I die I'd rather die by your side. Why would you want to die by my side? Because if I die by your side, I'd know that death was the only option. If it were someone else, I'd be afraid of dying far less nobly. Let me tell you something else. Look closely at Reed. It could be the color of her eyes or their shape. Can't put a finger on it, but she could be Orkin's daughter or granddaughter or great-granddaughter. You have to admit the girl's right. There's a slight resemblance. Is it not a good reason? Is that not a good reason to trust Orkin? Hmm. The plot thickens. Read. Oh, shit, I forgot to read. What are you drawing? What troubles you? Do you think Orkin might trick us? Mm. I should appease existence and reassure Orkin. It's almost a sign. He's very cautious. The reaping is dire news for him, just as all of ter it is for all of Terini Terminum. One day his service may come to an end. What do we have to do? Cup your hands and fill it with your blood. Stand under the stone and press your bloody palm against it. Anywhere is fine. Then wait till I touch it. What are we going to see? Mm. Nothing. One kind of darkness will stand in for another. When it dissolves, we'll be far from here. What are we going to feel? I don't know. Before, I didn't feel anything, but it wasn't during the reap time. How much more time do you need? Just a few moments. I'll let you know when I'm ready. Hmm. I wonder if I should call it quits here for the day. I think I'm going to. So, sorry for the disheveled uh, episode here, but wanted to get caught up to where we were. I apologize that I had to start the campaign over. I know that's very frustrating uh, when that shit happens, but there's no way I was going to go back and reread all of that dialogue again. There's just that 
would have been days of reading and I'm just not willing to do that. So again, I apologize. Uh, learn from my stupidity so you don't make those mistakes because obviously, as you can see, the game is much easier <laughs> without uh, having all those mistakes being made and having the injuries and wasting your strixes. So thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please give my channel a like and subscribe. Thanks again to the subscriber that donated this game to the channel so we'll see what it's all about. Have a great day.